Well, hey guys, so uh, this is my weekly update on how the head unit project in my E55 AMG is going right now. So first of all, pop the boot and show what's going on in here. So I've taken the rack mount out, which used to have the navigation player on it, that used to sit in this corner here. And as you see, I've got my PC in a box. Um, yes, this is a very poor case solution right now, but I'll get as to why it's like this for now. And then if you guys tuned into my live stream I did on Wednesday, I've assembled this board now. So I've basically got my TDA amplifiers here. They are being actively cooled by this fan when the system is running. And then you can see here I've 3D printed a connector so that I can connect the stock speaker harness to. That's currently glued into the bottom of the board, but we can fix that later on. Um, I plan to make this clip base so it'll be a lot easier to install. Uh, this has got my Curiosity Nano, uh, basically microcontroller on it, which does some of the power management stuff. We have had to make a new version of the board, which will come hopefully next week, because some of the power management stuff here doesn't work correctly. I forgot to hook up the P-channel MOSFETs correctly. Um, I thought they work like N channels, turns out they don't, so I need to put BJTs here, which the new board has. As for what's going on over here, you see this space here is empty, so this used to be the harness for the navigation player, and this used to be the harness for the audio gateway module, as well as this and the power connector. I've currently removed all of that, and the PC is in a box like this, because I found out that um, this is all getting wet. And after some testing, it turns out that what's happening is this screw here, is leaking water through when this gets wet and then it drips down onto the setup here hence why the setup is moved in the boot so that there's no chance of it getting wet because i really don't want this to get wet anyway so let's quickly power this on so to do that this normally just sits on top of the cpu fan over here because there's enough clearance um, so let me just, I don't know if I can do this with hand, but if I, one sec, I'll be back, I can't do this with one hand. So there we go, I've hooked everything up, so I've got the power cables coming out of here, there's one for the PC, one for the main board, or top board if you want to call it, and then that runs out to here to the AGW connector, where I've put these two little crocodile leads in, and basically to power it on right now, all I have to do is to plug the positive lead in, like that, and you see the PC starting to boot up. Now, once I get the power management system sorted, this can be constantly hooked up to uh, power, and the microcontroller there can turn the PC off, which consumes a load of power, even when in sleep mode. Um, and it can turn the PC off uh, after like half an hour of no one in the car or anything. That's the idea, so that I've got quick resume if I quickly want to nip out of the car and go back into the car again. I've got quick resume there. And that will be done via the CAN wires, which go here, which I'm yet to hook up. So CAN B here can hook directly up to the back of the SAM module. There is a CAN connector harness on the back of it. CAN C will be a little bit more difficult because I have to run a wire all the way to the front of the car where the CAN C distributor is in the passenger footwell. Now, whilst this is booting up, let's quickly have a look at how this actually works now that I've got the screen and everything sorted. So out the back here, you'll see there's an HDMI cable and a USB cable. They run up through this metal channel, which then, if I show here, I like the uh, powered by AMD Ryzen stickers I've got on the window now, it does attract some attention. But anyway, it comes out of here, I've made it run behind the cable channels, and then it joins underneath here to the main black um, cable channels, which run under the car where all the stock cabling runs for the car. So it continues down there. And then it continues down here, and then it goes up across, and then that finally leads us to the big reveal, which is my screen now, which we have here. So as a current test, it's running my TCU's configuration app, just because I've got the USB cable here, which plugs into a little breakout that I've got connected to my TCU. But we can go ahead and select the TCU here, and so it's all touchscreen. Eventually, I will want to run my own interface on here, but turn it to light mode so you can see it a little easier. Now, what you'll notice here is that because this is so big, and by the way, this is again custom 3D printed design that I've made. I'll show this in a bit in more detail. But the lower control panel doesn't fit here anymore because it used to fit here. So for now, I have it here. But eventually, I will just remove it, and the Curiosity Nano SBC in the back will emulate the function of this from touch controls on the PC. Now, the hazard light button, because that's kind of safety critical, will go in its own dedicated position here so that the PC doesn't have to turn on 
to activate the hazard light buttons because I figured that would be a really good safety thing. Like, imagine if you're trying to turn your hazard lights on and the PC's off and you have to wake the PC up, wait 10 seconds for it to turn on, then press the hazard light buttons. And also, in the UK, you must have hazard light buttons um, for your car to pass its yearly MOT check, so it will instantly fail if it doesn't have an obvious hazard light button physically present on the car and activatable at any time. So, for now, I'm just going to quickly go to Solenoid Live View just so there's something here for you guys to see. And, uh... Let's quickly hop in the driver's seat. Now, one question I get quite frequently, and I had did get quite a few people asking me on live stream last week um, about this, is am I going to sell this system? And the answer to that, to be very blunt, is no. This is a very bespoke system for my car, and because it's just such a huge project, I don't want to have any liability risks with selling something like this to other people. However, on saying that the schematics, etc., will be available on GitHub, so if you want to try something like this for your own 211, you're welcome to use the schematics and give it a go yourself. So also one thing is that we can now connect to 211 E55HU from my phone. There we go. Um, and we can go play some music because currently I found out that with um, big enough capacitors, you can actually start the engine whilst listening to music. So on the stock AGW module, the speakers will mute themselves when the engine is trying to crank. So, for an example of this, let's go find some music. So, here we are listening to some music, and if I try to turn the engine on, you'll hear the music stays on whilst cranking. There we go, the engine's running. So, let me quickly pause the music, because we don't need that now. Um, it's distracting. So, yeah, as you can see, I've currently got my TCU app on here. This shows the solenoid positions I'll shift into reverse. So this is basically like an oscilloscope, when each solenoid is showing low, it means it's on, high means it's off, because it's um, low side driven. Then go to neutral, go to drive, switch to first gear. So this is also really useful for the TCU development, because it means as I'm driving, I now have a really obvious in-my-face display of what's going on. I can do stuff like diagnostics, uh, CAN data. So I can view live what the car is trying to do. I'll turn off the maximum display because that's not needed for this. There we go. So you can see how much torque the engine is making. Let me put the car back in reverse before I rev it. And uh, you can also see the fuel consumption. So currently we're consuming just over one milliliter a second at idle in neutral. And you'll see something like the shifter position. So, uh, yeah. Um, now, let's quickly turn the engine off again, and apologies for the focus there. Let's quickly turn the engine off, and I will show what the back of this module looks like here. So I've managed to take it out. I couldn't do that on camera because it is really delicate. But um, the 3D mold I have, I'll see if I can put a video up of it on screen, uh, the free CAD file for it. But it's got supports here for the side of the screen and support here for the bottom of the screen, which doesn't interfere for touch cable. I've got mounting for the HDMI board, the um, backlight driver board here, and the touch input uh, controller. So the touch input goes to that USB breakout there. Again, I want to mount that maybe somewhere like inside the glove box when I'm done with all of this so that it's a lot tidy and I can just plug something into the glove box rather than it dangling out like this or maybe in the ashtray compartment. But we're, I'm still working on the next revision of this board which will have a back plate which runs this way which will then slot on this bit where the old command module used to be so that this has got more support for holding itself in the car because right now it does fall out a little bit and as a temporary fix I've put some hot glue here so it kind of presses on the walls here to kind of hold itself in place with friction but yeah um, that's kind of about it for this update video I don't really have much more to say other than um, do stay subscribed and all that and uh, I will keep posting regular updates on this project. I do plan to have some videos coming out with the TCU development project. Status updates, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you guys have any questions about this project other than one I've answered in this video, feel free to let me know in the comments. But uh, as usual, um, I'll see you in the next one. So, goodbye. So, in night mode, or dark mode, it's actually really not too bad. Like, it's a Probably slightly darker than the instrument cluster, but as soon as I turn this to light mode, we get the sun. So uh, yeah, don't do that.